are back with perhaps what has always been the most entertaining educational show on our nation station. It's the Antiguan Barbuda Social Security Board Junior Science Quiz. Do you know what Social Security Reciprocal Agreement means? It means if you are moving to another country within CARICOM, you can take your Social Security benefits with you. Now, a key feature of the CARICOM Reciprocal Agreement is that residents have the ability to move and not lose their Social Security credits. Plus, you can access long-term benefits once you satisfy existing criteria. Reciprocal agreements serve to ensure that your Social Security credits within the English-speaking Caribbean and Canada are secure. Contact the Social Security Office and ask for more details on the reciprocal agreement. And good evening viewers, good evening and welcome to this, another encounter in the 2024 Antigua and Barbuda Social Security Board Junior Science Quiz. Boy, are the weeks going by quickly. Already we are at the third encounter in this round. It means therefore that the two top teams from this round will be moving on to the next round where we will feature two teams per encounter. And so I know certainly um, all three of you will be keen on ensuring that you emerge as either one or two. But I know number one is the aspiration of all of them. Yeah? But we can only have one team at the front. Viewers, let us meet our competitors tonight. This evening we have the Antigua Grammar School, and we wish to introduce to you Mr. Omari Barnes. Good evening, Omari. Good evening. We also have with the Antigua Grammar School, Mr. Taj Spencer. Good evening. Taj is also the captain for his team this evening. Good evening to you, Taj. And Mr. John Sandy. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Uh, supporting these gentlemen, should it be necessary for us to call upon them, is Mr. Israel Rome and Mr. Leandre Roberts as standby members. We say good evening to both of you gentlemen. Very well, very well. From the St. Joseph's Academy, Mr. Nicholas McCalmott, Captain. Good evening. Good evening to you. We also have Mr. Caden Lewis. Good evening. Good evening to you. You hear those voices and the bass is just coming out so nicely. Good evening, gentlemen. I like to hear that. We also have Mr. Zuri Tishera. Good evening. Good evening, Zuri. Standby member for the St. Joseph's Academy is Zion Hercules. Good evening, Zion. Very well. And it is a pleasure for me this evening because we have a team that we have not seen in this competition at least for a very long time, certainly a very long time. The Seventh-day Adventist Secondary School, and we say good evening to the team members. Uh, Jerome Fergus. Good evening. Good evening, Jerome. Drayden Gibbs. Good evening. Good evening, Drayden. Drayden is also the captain for his team this evening, as well as Miss Christiana Alexander. Good evening. Good evening to you. Standby member for the St. Um, Seventh-day Adventist uh, Secondary School, Brianna Gomes. Gomez. Good evening, Brianna. Good evening. Assisting us with adjudicating this evening's encounter, we are pleased to welcome Ms. Alia Joseph from the Seventh-day Adventist School, Mr. Raymond Anthony from the St. Joseph's Academy, and Ms. Kendra Thomas from the Ministry of Education. Of course, keeping us on time, we have our ever-faithful Ms. Aisha Lynch. We want to also welcome the technical crew and all other persons who are in studio with us this evening to support our teams. Gentlemen and lady. This evening, round one will be teamed the individual buzzer round. In this round, we'll have one member per team, and each set will receive two questions. If someone interrupts before the reading of the question, he or she will be allowed to answer. If the answer is incorrect, we'll have to give the two remaining uh, teams an opportunity to hear a full reading and an opportunity to answer as well. Is that clear? Good. But should you be so cautious to allow me to read the question in, in its entirety and you were to buzz in and your answer is incorrect, I will also have to give the two remaining teams an opportunity to buzz in for a chance to answer. Is that clear? All hands on buzzers. I know they're working. We'll ask one person from each team just to give the buzzers a good press so viewers can see that they're working. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Adventist. Very good. So all of our buzzers are working. We will begin with our first set of Omari, Nicholas, and Jerome. Your first question. What term is used to describe a tropical cyclone with a wind speed over 74 miles per hour? St. Joseph Academy. 
Hurricane is the correct answer. Question number two for this set. Your question. How many nanometers make one meter? Antigua Grammar School. 10,000. I'm sorry. That is incorrect. Just a reminder that this is an individual buzz around. Uh, Taj, I know we're a little anxious here, so I'm going to have to give the two remaining teams an opportunity to answer. A reminder again that the competing persons at this point in our first round are Omari, Nicholas, and Jerome. All right? So, Nicholas and Jerome, here's the question again. How many nanometers make one meter? That is incorrect. The correct answer there is one billion. One billion. We move on to our next set of Taj. Now it's your turn to answer, Taj. Yes? Taj, Kaden, and Drayden. Your question. Which cell structure is often called the powerhouse of the cell? Anti grammar school? You mean to conjure? Mitochondria is correct. So. Question two for this cell. What is the fundamental scientific unit used to measure volume? Saint Seven Adventist? Liters. I'm sorry, can you repeat? Liters. That is incorrect. I'm sorry, so we'll give the two remaining teams an opportunity to answer here. Taj? Centimeters cube. That is cubic centimeters. That is incorrect. The correct answer we were looking for there was meters cube. All right? Cubic meters. And we move on now to our next set, our final set in this round. That is John, Zuri, and Christina. Your first question. Which system of the human body coordinates response? St. Joseph's Academy? The nervous system is the correct answer. Final question in this round. Give another name for the larval stage in the life cycle of a housefly. Antigua Grammar School. Pupa. That is incorrect. Yes, sir? A maggot. Maggot is correct. And so there we have it. We've come to the end of round number one. Uh, certainly an icebreaker for all. We'll have a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Self-employed persons are independent contractors, including but not limited to doctors, consultants, farmers, fishermen, graphic designers, vendors, bus and taxi drivers, gardeners, and mechanics. Self-employed persons who are also employed are now mandated by law to make self-employed payments. They can declare insurable earnings up to the Social Security ceiling of $6,500 per month. At the end of each calendar year, they may also adjust their declared earnings if necessary. Contact the Social Security Office and ask what you need to know as a self-employed person. And thank you for staying with us. Certainly, if you are just joining us, you would note that this evening's encounter uh, is featuring the St. Joseph's Academy and Tigger Grammar School and the Seventh-day Adventist Secondary School. We're very pleased to have all teams participating this evening. In round number one, we saw the Antigua Grammar School amassing a total of five points, St. Joseph's Academy, 15 points, and Seventh-day Adventist, you are still yet to get off the mark, but certainly an opportunity in this round, which is traditionally our clicker round. And I must advise viewers, this evening we are experiencing some technical challenges with our clicker, and so you may see the students writing their response as opposed to using the clicker as they would traditionally. So uh, just a little bit more work for us in-house to uh, tabulate those responses. Nevertheless, we turn our attention to uh, the screen which is in front of us. In this round, there will be a total of four multiple choice questions. You will have 10 seconds to select your option based on the slide in front of you. Your answers, normally with clickers, will be changed at any given point. But if perchance you wish to change your responses on the slips of paper in front of you, just ensure that it is clearly uh, indicated to the judges that you, have, you wish for them to omit a particular response. Is that clear? Your answers may be selected from A to D. I now invite you to turn your attention to the screen in front of you. Question number one, which of the following is not acidic? Which of the following is not acidic? That is time, thank you very much. Question number two in this round. In the diagram, which letter represents the lamina? 
in the diagram which, which, sorry, which letter represents the lamina. Question three in this round. Clothes are hung on a dry, on a line using heat from the sun. Please indicate the process by which heat is transferred from the sun to clothes. Final question in this round. What does this symbol represent? What does th this symbol represent? And that is the end of round number two. We'll have a word from our sponsors and then we will return with the scores and our teams taking a go at the individual explanation round. We'll be right back. Do you know what Social Security Reciprocal Agreement means? It means if you are moving to another country within CARICOM, you can take your Social Security benefits with you. Now, a key feature of the CARICOM Reciprocal Agreement is that residents have the ability to move and not lose their Social Security credits. Plus, you can access long-term benefits once you satisfy existing criteria. Reciprocal agreements serve to ensure that your Social Security credits within the English-speaking Caribbean and Canada are secure. Contact the Social Security Office and ask for more details on the reciprocal agreement. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much to our wonderful in-house guests, as well as those of you who are joining us via ABS Television. If you are just joining us, you are viewing this evening the third encounter in this year's Junior Science Quiz. And this evening, we have a matchup between the Antigua Grammar School, the St. Joseph's Academy, and the Seven-Day Adventist School. In round number two, Antigua Grammar School, you're able to amass a total of 50 points to give you a grand total of 55. St. Joseph's Academy, you're able to amass a total of 40 points, also giving you 55 points. Seven-Day Adventist, you were able to amass a total of 50 points given your grand total, of course, of 50, as you just got your account started. Please give them all a wonderful round of applause. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, second round. At this point, we want to say goodbye, just for a brief moment, to the uh, competitors from the Seventh-day Adventist School, as well as the St. Joseph's Academy, as the Antigua Grammar School gets their turn at our free response or explanation round. We'll see you in a little bit, guys. Taj and Company. You're reminded in this round, you, each member of your team will be given a question. Your question will be read twice. If your answer is incorrect, we'll give your team an opportunity to assist in coming up with the correct answer. Of course, you'll have 10 seconds in which to offer a response to us. Is that clear? All right. So we will begin with Omari. Omari, your question in this round. In the context of a science experiment in your school lab, Explain what is a fear test. In the context of a science experiment in your school lab, explain what is a fear test. And that is time, I'm sorry. You can ask your teammates for some assistance in this question. Gentlemen, that is time, that is time. And the answer we were looking for there is one in which only a single variable is, um, is changed or manipulated. Yes? Mm -hmm. Very good. Question number two. This question goes to you, Taj. How many millimeters are there in 250 cubic centimeters? How many millimeters are there in 250 cubic centimeters? Twenty-five. That is incorrect. I'm sorry. You turn it over to your team. Two 
2,500. I'm also sorry, that is also incorrect. And it's a one-to-one. -one. It's really a one-to-one. -one. So therefore, we were looking at 250 milliliters. Yes. All right. Final question in this round. Gentlemen, and this one goes to John. Explain why the following statement is misleading. Explain why the following statement is misleading. Here is the statement. We breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. We breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Explain why that statement is misleading. The statement is misleading because we, when we breathe in oxygen, um, When we breathe in oxygen, we inhale it. We inhale oxygen and we breathe out it. When you breathe in oxygen, we take in the oxygen in our lungs and when we breathe out oxygen, we release the carbon dioxide. John, I see you're struggling there. So I won't allow you to get yourself in any more trouble, so we'll turn it over to your team. Question again. Okay. Explain why the following statement is misleading. We breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Um, um, we we breathe when we breathe in oxygen we actually inhale it and we breathe out oxygen when we exhale it mm, gentlemen gentlemen i know you were trying there but in fact when we breathe in we breathe in all the constituents of air don't we oh nitrogen and oh, oh, yeah, that's yes. right that's right that's right that's right so it is often very misleading for us to suggest that we only take in oxygen from all the air around us, or that we only um, exhale or breathe out the um, carbon dioxide from all of the various constituents of air that we would have um, breathed in. Yes? All right, all right. So I know that one was a little struggle. Uh, you get a chance to re regroup, and we'll be right back with the other teams. Gentlemen, we want to say welcome to you. And uh, you're reminded of the rules in this round. In this round, each individual will be given a question. The question will be read twice for uh, your comfort. Please know that you have 10 seconds to begin uh, offering an answer. If your answer is correct, you will, go, you will gain 10 points for your team. If your answer is incorrect, we'll turn it over uh, to the other uh, teammates to assist, at which point you will get five points, provided your answer is correct. Is that clear? And we'll begin in order of appearance, and so we pay attention now to Nicholas. Nicholas, your question. In the context of a science experiment in your school lab, Explain what is a fear test. Explain what is a fear test. That is time. You may seek the assistance of your teammates. That is time, gentlemen. That is time. So in, in, the, in the particular context in which we're talking about is one in which only a single variable is changed, yes, during the experiment. So you were not able to gain some points there. Let's turn our attention to Caden. Caden, your question. How many milliliters are there in 250 cubic centimeters? How many milliliters are there in 250 cubic centimeters? Thousand. That is incorrect. Turn it over to your team. And gentlemen, that is time. Correct answer there was 250 milliliters. 250 milliliters. The final question in this round goes to Zuri. Zuri, your question. Explain why the following statement is misleading. Listen carefully. Explain why the following statement is misleading. 
we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. It's because uh, the process that you're trying to explain is respiration. And when we intake oxygen, we also take out carbon dioxide and energy. That sounded so lovely. But unfortunately, not quite the answer we were looking for. Zuri, you can seek the assistance of your team in this one. taking food and oxygen uh, and then you take out carbon dioxide and energy. I'm sorry, Zuri. You know, if we were looking for a response for respiration, your initial response would have gotten good points and I would have advocated for an additional five points for you. I don't know if that would have worked with the judges, but certainly in this instance, what we want to note is that when we breathe in, we're breathing in all of the components of air. Mm -hmm. Similarly, when we breathe out, so we breathe in and we, of course, by the time we are exhaling, we are also pushing out a greater amount of carbon dioxide um, with, with that as well. Yeah? So, Sounds here we good. Have it. Sounded good? Yeah? A little challenging in this round? Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. So let's hear from the Seventh-day Adventist Secondary School. So we want to say welcome again to the uh, members from the Seventh-day Adventist School. Please, you're reminded in this round, each individual will get a single question to which they're expected to offer a response. You'll have 10 seconds within which to offer a response. If your answer is incorrect, we'll turn it over to your team, at which point you could get some assistance. Is that clear? And should you deliver a correct response in that case, you will gain five points for your team. I invite you all to pay attention. Again, it is an individual effort. We will begin with, um, is it... Drayden? Is it Drayden? No, we need to come all the way back up to Jerome. Jerome. I think I got that wrong. Jerome, your question. In the context of a science experiment in your school lab, explain what is a fear test. In the context of a science experiment in your school lab, explain what is a fear test. Wow, all of our team seem to be struggling with this one. We'll turn it over to uh, the team to see if we can come up with a correct answer here. At this time, guys, you're reminded that you have 10 seconds within which to begin answering the question. In this case, we, the answer we're looking for here is a, it's an experiment in which only a single variable was changed during the experiment, all right? That manipulated variable, yeah? All right. So we move on now to Christiana. Christiana, here is your question. How many milliliters are there in 250 cubic centimeters? How many milliliters are there in 250 cubic centimeters? 250 cubic, two cubic centimeters are 250 milliliters. Thank you very much. Very good. Question number three, and this question goes to Drayden. Your question, sir. Explain why the following statement is misleading. Explain why the following statement is misleading. Here is the statement. We breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. We breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. That is time, we'll turn it over to the team. This statement is misleading because we breathe in different things as we breathe in oxygen, and we might breathe out the impurities. I'm going to have to turn that one over to the judges. I think they may be looking for something very specific in this instance. And so we'll ask them to deliberate on that one.
That is the saying, is it yes? That is the saying they will accept that response. There we have it. So I, I think in this instance, um, I think you were the only team to get that one correct. Again, just a reminder that it is not incorrect entirely, but it is a bit misleading to note that. Because as um, Drayden noted, we breathe in air as we do when we breathe out as well. However, we utilize that oxygen and um, in the process of doing so, we also expel um, the carbon dioxide, right? Yeah. How are we feeling after this round? A little bruised? A little worked over? Tell you what, let's have a word from our sponsors. Give you a chance to breathe and we'll be right back. A sickness benefit is payable weekly to an insured person between 16 and the pensionable age who is absent from work because of a certified illness, not due to occupational injury. There are minimum qualifications that must be met before you make a claim. So please, contact your Social Security office to find out more. Most importantly, the claim must be made within 21 days of the illness and the Social Security Medical Certificate completed in full to ensure timely processing. Contact the Social Security Office to have your questions on sickness benefits answered. Thank you very much viewers. Thank you for staying with us. I know you've been having quite an experience with uh, these young men and young women this evening as they attempted to answer the questions thrown at them. Again, I know for many of you, it was a great reminder of the time you spent in secondary school and you were smiling to yourself that you got all the answers correctly. I'm hoping at least. Well, I'm hoping. In this case, in round number three, we saw the Antigua Grammar School. You weren't able to move the needle, so you remain on 55 points. Similarly, St. Joseph's Academy, 55 points after three rounds. Seventh-day Adventists, secondary. You're able to amass a total of 15 points in that round, giving you a grand total of 65 points. So just a matter of 10 points separating the teams this evening. So it's still very much anyone's game. Remember, the top two teams from this round will go on to the next round. Is that clear? We now say goodbye to St. Joseph's Academy and the Seventh-day Adventist School while the Antigua Grammar School prepares for the Beat the Clock round. This is, in fact, the final round in this evening's encounter. Antigua Grammar School, Taj and company. This is the beat the clock round. You will have 60 seconds in which to answer as many questions as possible. All answers in this case must come through Taj with the assistance of the other teammates. A new question will only be read after Taj indicates a correct answer or if he asks me to pass on a particular question. Is that clear? All right, so your 60 seconds begin now. True or false, all metals are conductors. True. What quantity does an ammeter measure? Electric current. What part of the female reproductive system holds the unreleased eggs? Ovary. What are the two main categories of animals? Vertebrates and invertebrates. Which subatomic particle carries no charge? Neutrons. What process is used to separate a mixture of dyes? Pass. Which organ is responsible for detecting light? Eyes. What is the pH of a neutral substance? Seven. What type of charge does a proton have? Neg positive. Which sense organ detects light? Eyes. What term is used to describe the loss of topsoil? Erosion. True or false, there is no gravity on the moon? False. What quantity has SI unit meters? Length. The three main layers of the earth are the core, mantle, and the? Crust. What type of energy is possessed by a stretched rubber band? Sulfur. Which subatomic particle carries a negative charge? Electron. Thank you very much. There we have it. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Gentlemen, you will have 60 seconds in which to answer as many questions as possible. All answers should come through the designated responder, in this case, which is Zuri. A new question will only be read after an answer is given or after Zuri has indicated to me to pass. Is that clear? I invite you to get ready as your 60 seconds begin now. True or false? All metals are conductors. False. What quantity does an ammeter measure? Current. What part of the female reproductive system holds the unreleased egg? Fall. Pit. Pass. What, what are the two main categories of animals? Um, invertebrates and vertebrates. Which subatomic particle carries no charge? Neutron. 
What process is used to separate a mixture of dyes? For chromatography. Which organ is responsible for detecting light? I. What is the pH of a neutral substance? Seven. What type of charge does a proton have? Positive. Which sense organ detects light? I. The term, what term is used to describe the loss of topsoil? Pass. True or false, there is no gravity on the moon? False. What qu quantity has SI units of meters? Lens. The three main layers of the earth are core, mantle, and their crust. What type of energy is possessed by a stretched rubber band? Possessive. Which subatomic particle carries a negative charge? Electron. Where in the body are incisors found? Mouse. Give another name for the larval stage in the life cycle of a mosquito. Pass. Name the bony structure that... Oh, man. That buzzer, we were, we, were a, we were in a groove a while ago, such that I did not even hear the buzzer. Yes, let's give them a round of applause at their attempt at the Beat the Clock round. Jerome, Drayden, Christiana, Christina. this is the Beat the Clock round. You'll have 60 seconds in which to answer as many questions as possible. I will only give you a new question once you have offered me a response or you've indicated to me to pass. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I invite you to speak loudly and clearly so that the judges may hear your response. Drayden. Again, this is a team effort, so please huddle closely together. And your 60 seconds begin now. True or false, all metals are conductors. False. What quantity is, does an ammeter measure? Electric current. What part of the female reproductive system holds the unreleased egg? Ovary. What are the two main categories of animals? Vertebrae and invertebrates. Which subatomic particle carries no charge? Electron. What process is used to separate a mixture of dyes? Pass. Which organ is responsible for detecting light? I. What is the pH of a neutral substance? Seven. What type of charge does a proton have? Positive. Which sense organ detects light? I. What term is used to describe the loss of topsoil? Erosion. True or false, there is no gravity on the moon? False. What, S what quantity has the SI unit of meters? Length. The three main layers of the earth are the core, the mantle, and the? Crust. What type of energy is possessed by a stretched rubber band? Elastic potential. What sub which subatomic particle carries a negative charge? Electron. Where in the body are incisors found? The, no the mouth. Give another name for the larval stage of the life cycle of a mosquito. Lava. And uh, there is it. Your mm. 60 seconds is over. Let's give them all a big round of applause. We'll hear from all sponsors. <laughs> Stay with us, viewers. We'll be right back with the final scores. Do you know what social security reciprocal agreement means? It means if you are moving to another country within CARICOM, you can take your social security benefits with you. Now, a key feature of the CARICOM Reciprocal Agreement is that residents have the ability to move and not lose their social security credits. Plus, you can access long-term benefits once you satisfy existing criteria. Reciprocal agreements serve to ensure that your social security credits within the English-speaking Caribbean and Canada are secure. Contact the Social Security Office and ask for more details on the reciprocal agreement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, viewers, and thank you for staying with us. After four rounds, after four rounds, we see the, um, yes, we do have some results here that indicates there are two teams that are making it on to the next round. Just which two? Let's find out. In round number four, the Antigua Grammar School, you're able to master a total of 70 points. St. Joseph's Academy, 65 points. Seventh-day Adventist, 70 points. In the final analysis, the Antigua Grammar School, 125 points. St. Joseph's Academy, 120 points. And the Seventh-day Adventist Secondary School, 135 points. Please do give all of our teams a big round of applause for their wonderful effort this evening. Gentlemen, lady, I, I know that the, and we all admitted, the, th the third round took us for a bit of a spin, yes? Uh, so it gives an opportunity now for those teams that are moving on to the next round of this competition to ensure that we cover all of our bases, all of our bases, including the very rudimentary stuff, the things that we perhaps have forgotten from second form, yes? And some of those rules from first form as well. So we need to go back and refresh and um, our minds where those things are concerned. But here we have it. So the St. Joseph's Academy, uh, you will be saying goodbye to us, I believe, in this round. And we will be moving on with the 
Antigua Grammar School and the Seventh-day Adventist School. Before we allow you to say your, your thank yous, um, I want to use this opportunity to select the matchup for the next round. And I'm going to invite Omari. Please join me here. And also invite, um, is it Katrina? Christina, my apologies. Come on, Christina, join me, join me at the podium. You're going to help me to select our matchup? Pull one. Pull one. You have the... Show you the people in this one. The Antigua Grammar School. Yeah. We'll come up against St. Anthony's Secondary School. Give you a chance to go first. Oh, yeah, you can pull your name as well. Here you go. Oh. <laughs> as coincidence would have it. Seventh-day Adventist Secondary. We'll come up against... The Piers Secondary School. And of course, we know who the other two are, but we'll pull nonetheless. The Antigua Girls High School will come up against the Clay Hall Secondary School. So, in round number two, viewers, we will have a matchup between St. Anthony's Secondary School and the Antigua Grammar School, Piers Secondary School, and the Seventh day Adventist Secondary School. Antigua Girls High School and Clay Hall Secondary School. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very kindly. You may have your seat. So some interesting matchups in the second round of this competition. At this point, I wish to offer an opportunity for each team, captain for each team, to express some words of gratitude to the persons who were instrumental in their preparation. Tash? Good day. I would like to start off by thanking God because everything is possible to God. And we are brought here to God. I would like to thank um, the judges and Mr. Azil for helping us and guiding us through this competition. I would like to thank my teammates, Sandy, John, and Omari for helping me to go through this competition. I would like to thank our standby as well helping us practice and attending with us. I would like to thank our coaches and also the higher students who helped us. Our coach here, Mr. Isa. And I would like to thank my competition, our competition, for giving us a good game. All right. Thank you very much. Well said, Tash. Well said. Turn our attention to Nicholas. <coughs> well, I want to start off by saying that it's unfortunate that we lost. But... Uh, in preparation for this competition, I just want to thank, obviously, my biology teacher, Mr. Nanton, for repetitively telling us to study for this quiz. Um, thank my teammates for putting in the effort in, you know, making it through the rounds. The third round was kind of tricky. But, um, um, it was a good competition. I want to congratulate the other teams for it. Thank you very much. Well said, Nicholas. Graydon? Good evening. I would like to thank my t teachers, my friends, my teammates for encouraging me to do this quiz, even though I didn't really think it was a good idea. But I think that we did a good job. I would also like to thank God. And I'd, I'd like to thank our competition for giving us a good game, too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Raiden. We have, we have a lot of confessions this evening, don't we? A lot of confessions. I'm happy that someone was able to convince you, after all, that it was a good idea for you to be a part of this initiative. So once again, on behalf of all of us here, it's been a wonderful pleasure. I've been your moderator, Ashworth Azell, on behalf of our executive producer, Ms. Alicia Knowles, at the uh, Education Broadcasting Unit, and her entire technical team, and the judges for this evening, Ms. Alia Joseph, Mr. Raymond Anthony, Ms. Kendra Thomas, and all of the other persons who ensured that we were able to bring you a wonderful encounter this evening. Our competing teams, thank you all very much for making this sacrifice week after week to be here to not just entertain, but also to help educate uh, your peers, 
in TV land, as well as uh, the general viewing audience who might uh, be very happy for this opportunity to reconnect with their basic scientific knowledge. All right, so once again, on behalf of all of us here, it's been a wonderful pleasure. We'll see you next week. Good evening, and God bless you.